wrong? Because it hurts somebody else. Because it hurts them. Why is it wrong to hurt people? Because it hurts people. Why is it wrong to hurt people? Let me explain. Because well-being is valuable. You know why? Why is well-being valuable? For the betterment of the species. Why should you better the species? I don't know. I mean, you're not going to live that long anyway, right? No, God's going to smite me any day now. Why is it wrong to hurt people? Because we were made in the image of God. That's why. God is against inward motives if that are selfish. If someone you love them back, isn't it selfish to be like, no, nah, I'm sorry. You know each other. It's selfish for you to be like, yeah, then, I'm sorry. Homosexuals don't love each other. They lust after each other. No, I disagree. Uh, I love you. That's why a man will sleep with another man, why a woman will sleep with another woman. Because it's love. It's love. It's love. And then you have to sit there before you wake up. Why is not against love? You're supposed to love women. You're supposed to love men. You're supposed to love everyone. There's nothing wrong with love. There's something wrong with sleeping. Uh, the gate. The stay up stay. It's contrary to God's plan. Contrary to God's design, contrary to the law of nature. You don't live a moral life. Yes, I do. You're a lesbian. How is that? I can understand how telling somebody. God doesn't help you voluntary action. So I can be able to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to tell you. You're not going to tell you. You're not going to tell you. Okay, all on tape. The Bible says yeah. this. The Bible says you know, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus Christ. So even if you have feelings, I'm going to say, well, you can deny those feelings. That's not who you are. Then I would be miserable. If I had a picture, and uh -huh. and so you do it to be happy. So that's so. Just like everyone What's else on this one. I hate I would like to be happy and I would like to live moral life. That is, that is what I would like. It'd be better for you to, to be miserable in this life than to be miserable for eternity. You know? Yes, you know, it's like a, you know, a lot of men will cheat on their wives. Because they'll be, they say, well, oh, I'm just so unhappy with my wife. And I'm so miserable. I'll be so miserable <laughs> if I don't cheat on my wife. So they cheat out of selfishness. And that's how many homosexuals are. They say, oh, I would just be so miserable if I don't sleep with men. No, oh, I'd be so miserable if I'm not with the same sex. So they'll be homosexuals because they're selfish. You know, sometimes it's better for you to be, be miserable. Than to be, it's better to be miserable than to be sinful. Just because sin makes you happy doesn't mean you should do it. Some people are miserable if they don't get their hair on it. Some people are miserable if they don't smoke their crap. It's better to be miserable than to be sinful. What's impressive is the reason Jesus died. Jesus didn't die so he could go to heaven. He was already there. No matter why you died, no matter what he was rewarded. But it's the love that's impressive. It's a selfish act on me. It was a benevolent act. If God came down to me, you blew your fucking brains out. I dare you to go to heaven. If God came and spoke to me in a way like that, fuck, I'd kill myself now. I'd kill myself by eating meat. No, God says if you stop sinning and come to Jesus, you're guaranteed to go to heaven. Come say that to me. If he comes and says shit to me, I'll be here. He's already told you. Your conscience. He not, oh, my conscience. And he's sending preachers. Thank you for being in my head. And he's been in the Bible. Not, my conscience God's already done so much. God's done a whole lot to talk to us. But what's impressive about the cross is that, I mean, Jesus was in heaven with all the worship, all the praise he wanted. The angels just obeyed his every command. But he chose to leave heaven, to be born in a manger, to be born into a poor family where there was no room for him in the inn, where his family later rejected him, the religious people rejected him, his disciples even rejected him. <laughs> and he had his beard ripped out and his back ripped open and his hands and feet pierced and he did that for us when he didn't have to. He did that so we don't have to go to hell. So we can go to heaven.
that's what's impressive about the cross. The love that was manifested, the love that God showed at the cross is amazing. It's amazing love. And that should bring us to repentance. That should make us not to want to sin anymore. That should make us want to hate sin and reject sin and live for Him and obey Him. You know, and that's, that's, that's what the cross ought to do to your heart. Because as long as you rebel against God, you're an enemy of God. And as long as you're an enemy of God, you cannot be reconciled unto God. But to be reconciled unto God requires that you give up your rebellion. That you stop rebelling against His commandments. That you yield unto Him. That you come to Jesus Christ. That you put your faith and hope in the blood that Christ had spilt. That's what it requires. Well, yeah, I mean, you ought to take care of people's physical needs. I mean, that's a Christian duty. But you also need to take care of their spiritual needs. Like valuable And the fact that they're cursing at the preaching and rejecting it shows that there's a big need. Uh, of course, God calls us to love. Love has many forms. You know, take care of the poor, take care of orphans, take care of widows. That's good. We, we ought to do that. We also, I mean, you should want people to go to hell. Jesus spent his time on earth, and the world rejected him. The world still rejects him today. They crucified him then. They uh, ripped out his beard. And people would think, you know, Jesus, you're really wasting your time. These people are rejecting you. The only, you can only push people away if people are neutral. The Bible says you're either in the light or in the darkness. You're either accepting God or rejecting God. So I don't think you can... Uh, you know, th th this campus was in sin before I got here. I don't think I made anyone a sinner. I don't think I made any Christians backslide. I think people were living in sin before I got here. And the hostility that you see when we preach is simply a manifestation of their heart. It's a revealing of how they really, really think of the Bible. It's just a manifestation of the condition they were already in. I didn't make them that way. They make themselves that way. I, I, we simply reveal how they really are inside of them. But, uh, that, that, that is the problem with the world. Is people don't want to hear about God. People don't want to forget about God. People want to reject what God says. They don't like His commandments. They want to live how they want to live. And so they were already off the tracks. I didn't push them away. They walked away when they chose to sin. From here to call people out of sin, to call people back to God. But the Bible says Jesus was a voice crying out in the world. Because when there's an urgency, it's okay to yell. When there's an urgency, it's okay to raise your voice. And I'm saying there's an urgency. People are going to hell by the millions. People are going to hell every day. People are dying without God. People are dying without Christ. So it's okay to put it on a banner, to put it on a sign. It's okay to raise your voice and tell people the truth. It says Paul in the marketplace would dispute and argue with people every day. And we could say, well, Paul, you think you're being productive arguing with people. There were times he was beaten, times he was put in prison, times he was kicked out of the city. We could say, Paul, you know, you think you could have used your time better, maybe start some orphanages instead of causing all this problem in the marketplace. He didn't think so. He'd have preaching. You need to lift your voice and declare the truth. The problem is most people want to hide their uh, religion. They want to hide their views. They don't want to bring it to the public because they know the public's going to reject. They're afraid of rejection. But I'm more afraid of people being rejected by God, being sent to hell. But uh, Jesus made himself with no reputation. The Christians, so many Christians, are trying to look good. Oh, you're making us look bad, they say. They're only concerned about their reputation. Love does not care about your own reputation. Love cares about the value and well-being of other people. And uh, Jesus made himself with no reputation.